in seven cows, ugly and gaunt. Book one, Behold Darkness and Sorrow. Daniel Walker begins having prophetic dreams. Since he is a new Christian and unfamiliar with the Holy Scriptures, he turns to an older pastor to help interpret the dreams. Through one of his dreams, Daniel learns of an imminent threat of an electromagnetic pulse attack which will wipe out America's electric grid, sending the country into a technological dark age. Living in a nation where all life sustaining systems of support are completely dependent on electricity and computers, the odds for survival are dismal. If they want to live, Daniel and his friends must focus on faith, wits, and preparation to be ready before the lights go out. Buy your copy of Seven Cows, Ugly and Gaunt, Book One, Behold Darkness and Sorrow, by best-selling author Mark Goodwin in paperback, Kindle, or audio edition from Amazon.com today. Welcome back to another edition of the Prepper Recon Podcast. Hey, Preppers and Patriots, uh, big announcement today, big news, uh, my new book, Seven Cows, Ugly and Gaunt, book one, Behold, Darkness and Sorrow is now available in paperback and Kindle. As you might guess from the title, it deals with prophetic dreams. In the book of Genesis, of course, Pharaoh has a dream of seven cows, ugly and gaunt, which is a prophecy of the coming famine in Egypt. In my new book, Danny Walker, a young Christian, also has prophetic dreams. Uh, he has dreams about ugly, gaunt cows. However, his dreams are quite different than Pharaoh's. His cows are split up, and they come at different times, and they speak of judgment that are coming upon America for rejecting God's word and rejecting his ways. Through one of Danny's dreams, he learns of an EMP that's coming upon the U.S. as a direct result of God's abandonment wrath. After years of protecting, protecting a nation that uses his name as a curse word, murders the innocents, uh, evicts the Bible from classrooms, sets up a legislator to defies God's definition of marriage. He removes his hedge from around America, just as he did for Israel. Uh, Isaiah 5, 4 through 6 says, What could have been done more to my vineyard that I have not done in it? Wherefore, when I looked that it should bring forth grapes, it brought forth wild grapes. And now, go to, I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will take away the hedge thereof, and it shall be eaten up, and break down the wall thereof, and it shall be trodden down. And I will lay it waste. It shall not be pruned nor digged, but there shall come up briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. And of course, a lot of these curses that you hear here are kind of echoed all through the Bible. Um, you think about the the thorns, you know, in Genesis, the, the fall of man, that was the initial curse, you know, the the ground's going to bear thorns. And that's that's like a, it's it's just a, a simple um, repercussion for for that original sin is 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 the thorns. And uh, and when he says, I, I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it, that that that's we hear that again in, in Deuteronomy 28 in the 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 blessings for obedience and the curses for disobedience god talks about you know the the sky above you will be brass and the the ground beneath you will be iron so it's just this idea that you're not going to you're not going to be able to till the soil you're not going to get the rain that you need to produce the crops to have the type of abundance that you'll have if you'll just obey him and and we've been running on we've been running on fumes when it comes to God's blessings in this country for for years and years and so uh this idea of him taking away a hedge is sort of like he doesn't even have to actively be involved in striking us down all he has to do is quit protecting us and the second he quits protecting us um, all the natural forces, uh, ISIS and our collapsing economy and all of that sort of, that sort of stuff can just come in and take over. And of course, EMP, it's a, it's a really uh, a big threat now. So Danny Walker and his friends have to take the warning they've received about the impending judgment in the form of an EMP, and they have to do everything they can to prepare for a cataclysmic 
event that's going to plunge America into a complete technological dark age. And while the book is fiction, I try to work in a lot of preparedness knowledge into the storyline. I also look to include a plausible situation that, that force readers to think about how well prepared they are to, to handle such an event. Um, if they were be, to be in the same shoes as the protagonist, you know, uh, if if the guy's in a shootout, you know, you think about what would I have would I have those those shooting skills or uh, would I have that level of situational awareness to 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 survive that situation if I were to happen to be in the exact same shoes as the protagonist. And then besides all of that, I feel a true calling to encourage folks to grow in their faith through my fiction books. Uh, the survival rule of three says. You can go three minutes without air, three hours without shelter in extreme conditions, three days without water, three weeks without food, and three months without hope. So many preppers are well supplied with the physical aspects of preparedness, but they don't have a strong relationship with Jesus Christ. And it's that spiritual foundation of being in touch with your creator. And and that's where you get that limitless source of hope in and, and that's what you're going to need in the uncertain days ahead. Folks that have read my previous books know that I usually focus on a financial collapse as the primary, primary catalyst for the chaos my characters have to endure. So this is my first EMP novel, but I really dug into the research on EMPs. And without a doubt, I think EMP would be the toughest disaster to survive. And I believe that's why a lot of folks just avoid thinking about it. Because it is, it's it's so daunting, and it's such a a big thing to to have to survive. And uh, the statistics that we get from the government are are really really bad on EMP survival. Uh, we've had Dr. Peter Pry on the show before, and he said that uh, the Congressional EMP Commission uh, came up with a number that it would probably be somewhere in the vicinity of ninety percent of the population of America would be dead within the first year after an EMP attack. So. Uh, it's it's one of those things that are kind of spooky, and it, it sounds a little tougher to survive than an economic collapse or, or other things. And a lot of people, that's what they do. They stick their head in the sand, and they just try not to think about it. But if something like that ever happens, sticking your head in the sand is not going to work. And, and a lot of people think, well, you know, if I die, I die. But uh, in that type of situation where you're starving to death or you're dying of thirst or being uh, killed by marauders, that's not a pleasant death. That's not the type of death you want to die. So um, definitely something you want to think about before it happens. And I just mentioned the Dr. Peter Pry, and of course he was on the show not too long ago, and he's the former CIA nuclear strategist. Uh, so he's very well read in on, on the different threats. Uh, one of the things that he's most concerned about is the KSM satellite that's or orbiting the Earth that was put up by North Korea, and he thinks that that could very well be housing a nuclear warhead that's specifically designed to generate what's called a super EMP. And, of course, back on uh, February 7th, just uh, uh, a couple of weeks ago, um, North Korea just launched yet another rocket which was carrying another KSM satellite. So... Uh, that has a very, very real potential of being a second warhead or a backup warhead for a uh, for an EMP attack. So uh, whatever the threat was before February 7th, it just doubled. So uh, it's a very, very real threat, and it's definitely something we have to think about. And besides North Korea, the intelligence community is well aware of China, Russia, and possibly even Iran's ability to launch an EMP attack against our country. So with our nation's growing number of enemies and our growing list of sins and abominations that offend our creator and offend our only hope of refuge from such a catastrophe, it makes sense to prepare for an event of this magnitude. And while my new book, Behold Darkness and Sorrow, was written to entertain, uh, I also hope it will inform and encourage. My previous books have all performed well. The Days of Noah series that spent several months on the Amazon bestsellers list. And as with all my books, you won't find any swearing. You won't hear me misusing God's name. And you won't have to uh, read past uh, embarrassing sex scenes. Um, so providing wholesome entertainment that won't grieve the Holy Spirit, that's, that's very, very important to me all through my writing process. 
and the paperback and the Kindle editions are both available right now from Amazon.com. And for the audiobook fans, the book should be out in Audible no later than April 1st. Kevin Pierce, he's my regular audiobook producer. Uh, folks that have listened to my audiobooks in the past, uh, you'll know his voice and recognize him. He's just a great storyteller. He's just got that perfect storytelling voice for, for audiobooks, and uh, it really, really uh, meshes well with my work. And uh, from the time he finishes production, it usually takes a little more than a month to get it approved from Audible. So uh, that's why we're putting that April 1st uh, deadline. It could be a little sooner than that. But um, they, they, the, in the last book, they did take a little longer than normal. So I want to make sure that um, I don't have people uh, expecting it to be out any sooner than it is. And as always, we're having another big giveaway to celebrate the release of the book. Uh, one first prize winner is going to win a custom Prepper Recon individual first aid kit. Uh, and of course, that's got the EMT shears in it. It's got the Israeli battle dressing. It has, which is a compression bandage for, for any type of a, a deep traumatic wound that's not, that's not a, an artery. Uh, and then I've also got, uh, got the TK4 tourniquet in there in case it is an artery. And, um, and you do have to tie that off. And we've got the uh, quick clot in there, which is a hemostatic agent that will that will pulls all of the platelets out of the blood so that it clots up and uh, it uh, stops that bleeding within minutes, even in really really deep gashes. Uh, it's got a suture kit in there. It's got steri strips that, that act as a temporary suture. Um, lots of gauze band aids. Uh, antibiotic gel, hand sanitizer that you can use to clean your hands or your equipment if you have to do work in the field. Uh, so really, really good thing to have on your bug out bag, uh, to have in your car, or uh, just to have around the house because most first aid kits are not that comprehensive. And uh, even in good times, you know, 9-11 response times can be uh, up to a half hour or more in some in some cities. So uh, it's you need to be able to take care of yourself and even outside of disaster times, but especially in disaster times, it's, it's a, it's a great kit to have around. Uh, that first prize winner is also going to win some 550 paracord shoelaces with the, with the manufactured ends. Um, so you always have some strong cordage wherever you go. They're going to win a copy of Survi surviving an urban disaster by Richard Duarte and they're also going to get a paperback copy of the Christian Prepper's Handbook by Zion Prepper. So a lot of great prizes for whoever hits that first prize. And then everybody is going to win the runner-up prize. So the, the runner-up prize is a free PDF of my 7-Step Survival Plan. I wrote that with David Kobler, a.k.a. Southern Prepper, on, on YouTube. And we wrote it to be just a really, really good primer on prepping and it takes you through seven different steps and those seven steps are laid out in a prioritized list because uh, especially for folks that that just got into prepping if you're a seasoned prepper uh, and you think back to what it was like when you first woke up and you first said oh my goodness we're living in a house of cards and and this is not sustainable and I have to get ready now and you can remember you know there were so many things to do and so much stuff to think about and so much you know you needed so much individual types of information that, that you just couldn't get in one place and and it was scary and so we tried to break that all down, give people a priority so that they could say, okay, I need to do this first, this second, this third. And and with each step, becoming a little bit more prepared uh, as they complete each one of those seven steps. And, you know, and we tell you, you know, how to do some, some very low cost uh, food storage and how to uh, do some low cost uh, water storage and uh, where are you going to get water and uh, some things that you can do to be a little more safe. And so it's really, really good primer book. Uh, also for folks that have been prepping for a long time, a lot of times you'll get pigeonholed into one area or the other, and you'll neglect some other important aspect of preparedness. And, and reading through that book will just kind of remind you of the holistic approach to, that you need to take to it so that, that uh, you're not spending too much time or too many resources on one specific area of preparedness and neglecting something else that, that is going to negate everything else you've done and all the work you've put into the preparedness that you have done. 
So here's how you win. First, you go to Amazon.com and you leave a review for Behold, Darkness and Sorrow, Seven Cows, Ugly and Gaunt, Book One. Uh, the second thing, and this is the last part of, the, of how you win, is you just send me an email. And in that email, you're going to have your Amazon screen name that you used for the, for the review. And you're going to send that email to PrepperRecon at gmail.com. And in the subject line, you're going to put Behold, Darkness, and Sorrow Giveaway. So that's all there is to it. It's those two simple steps. You leave the review, and then you shoot me an re- email with your Amazon screen name. And the uh, subject line says, Behold, Darkness, and Sorrow Giveaway. And, and that's it. And everybody's going to win. Like I said, you're going to automatically get the seven step survival plans. You're going to win that. And, uh, one, one winner is going to get the, the really good first aid kit with the, and the paracord shoelaces and those two, uh, paperback copies of surviving an urban disaster and the Christian preppers handbook. So great prizes and very easy to win. So make sure you take advantage of that. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. KD Armor offers affordable body armor, including level three trauma plates made of AR-500 steel. These plates can endure multiple rounds from pistols and rifles up to 7.62 NATO. Use coupon code PREPPERRECON to get 10% off your entire order at katiearmor.com. That's C-A-T-I armor.com. Ready Made Resources is a trusted name in the Prepper community because they've been around for 18 years. They offer great prices on night vision, water filtration, long term storage food, solar energy components, and provide free technical service. Get ready for an uncertain future at readymaderesources.com. Now, as I mentioned, we've got this new threat from the second KSM satellite that's now orbiting the Earth that could potentially have the super EMP in it. So I want to take a few minutes and just talk specifically about EMP preparedness. And the, the basics for EMP preparedness... They're exactly the same as they are for hurricane preparedness, uh, prepping for a, a financial collapse, or or thinking about how you're going to survive a zombie apocalypse. Because the basics are always the same, because basic human needs are always the same. What you need to survive, you need water. So you got to have a re- reliable source. you got to know where you're going to get it, how you're going to purify it, uh, whether it's a rain catch system or a lake or a stream or or a well or whatever it is you just need to know how you're going to get it and how you're going to purify it and and how you're going to store it um food obviously you got to eat you need shelter and uh when when um when things melt down uh you can't depend on the police for for your security so you need to be able to know how you're going to defend yourself um you may be some period of time without uh, without nine one one, you may not have uh, medical services available. So having a good comprehensive medical kit's a really really good idea to have. Uh, you need faith, like we said, you can make it three months without hope, and a lot of these types of disasters go longer than that, and people just lose it. They just lose control because they have no hope. They can't see any way out of it. And, and so you need that hope and you need that, that connection with your creator and you need a uh, community. So uh, those are the basics and that's, that's across the board, whatever the disaster, you need all those things. Um, for an EMP, most folks in the U.S. are completely dependent on electricity for their water. So most people, if they're on a well, they have an electric pump that feeds into some type of a pressure tank and then maybe sends that through a some type of a purification system and then into their house. Uh, and then that well's deep. And if the electricity goes out, they've got no way to extract that water. They're they're that close to being self-sufficient, but, but they just don't have it. Or they're on a municipal water system, which... Uh, those will often have pressure for a little while after disaster, even after you lose electricity. Uh, so if, if that's your situation, you do lose electricity, it's a good idea to fill up your tub, fill up every bucket, every pan, every everything you've got with water. Uh, we were in um, we were in South Florida after uh, after uh, Hurricane Wilma came through, and about two days into it, we lost water pressure, and we didn't get it back until. Uh, we got the water pressure back before we got our electricity back because they they prioritize getting those pumps back online 
But uh, but if it's an EMP, that's not going to happen. They're not going to come back online. So you're going to have that pressure for that that uh, limited amount of time after the power goes out, and then it's going to be over with. It's going to be it. Uh, what we did is we're on a well, and we have the electric pump, but um, I had a hand pump installed, uh, which operates completely independently from my electric pump. Uh, I think it was about 150 bucks. That included all the parts and all the labor. And I'm no mechanical genius, so I had the local water system installer do it for me. And and that was the lion's share of the 150 bucks was was the labor of having them come out and and put that on. But for 150 bucks to know that you've got water with or without electricity, that's that's a that's a pretty that's that's well spent money. So. Um, I'm going to put a link in today's show notes so that you'll be able to go to my YouTube channel and you can look at my well and see what I did to put that that uh, that hand pump on the existing wellhead. And what they did, the the uh, they were a really, really good company. It's affordable water if you're anywhere around the uh, central Florida coast. Um, they service a lot of uh, wells around here. So uh, they put a double check valve on that so that uh, whether the electric pump's going or whether the hand pump's going, they're both feeding off the same wellhead and they don't affect each other. So uh, very, very good system. And uh, and if even if you are a do-it-yourselfer, but you just couldn't figure out exactly how you would do it, uh, it was a really, really good solution. And you'll be able to look and see how they did that. So uh, we'll have that in today's show notes to so go and check that out on YouTube. And the specifics for EMP are going to be primarily electronic in nature. Communications are going to be a thing of the past. And so the only comms you're going to have is what you put aside and and protected in some form of a Faraday cage. So a Faraday cage is just something that you protect your vital electronics from an EMP blast. The science on EMP protection is somewhat loose. Different people are going to give you different advice. And the bottom line is it's going to largely depend on how large the blast is and what your proximity is to the blast. So to protect my shortwave and my two handheld radios, what I did is I left those in the original cardboard box. I wrapped that original cardboard box in aluminum foil. I stuck that in a Mylar bag, sealed it. I stuck the Mylar bag inside a metal ammo box, and and I've got the metal ammo box lined with cardboard so it's not touching the sides of the ammo box. And then uh, to seal the cracks on the ammo box where it closes between the lid and the base, I use metallic tape, the same stuff that they use for air conditioning ductwork. Now, that's not duct tape. The stuff I'm talking about looks more like aluminum foil, and, and it's got a sticky backing. And your local hardware store is going to have that or your big box store, your Lowe's or your Home Depot. Uh, it's a very, very common product. And uh, all uh, heating and air conditioning guys all use that stuff. Uh, I also have a backup charge controller and a backup inverter for my solar array. And I've got them wrapped in the same manner and stuck in a in an ammo box just like the, the radios. And I think it's a good idea to keep some batteries around. They're not going to be a- affected by an EMP because they don't have any circuitry. Um, Other people like to use a metal garbage can for an EMP shield or a Faraday cage. And I've even seen people build a Faraday cage out of chicken wire in just a box frame. And uh, I I don't know how well that's going to work, but uh, the best way to find out if your particular favorite protection method works is to take a pair of walkie-talkies or handheld two-way radios, turn both radios on, Put one in your proposed type of EMP protection, and then with the other, you key the mic. If you can still hear that mic keying, that means the radio wave's still going through, and it's still getting through. So that means uh, an EMP wave is very similar to a radio wave, and it's probably going to go through too. If you can key that mic, and you don't hear it, and it's not it's not picking up the signal, and you're not hearing that static when you key the mic, uh, and they're on the right channels, then you're probably pretty good for EMP protection because that means that radio signal is not going through even at that close proximity. So uh, you're probably fairly well protected if you're able to do that and not hear that mic key. And after an EMP, there's just going to be a lot of things you're going to have to learn to live without. And But 
the things that you think you're absolutely going to need to survive, try to get those things put put aside and protected now while you still can. Uh, vehicles, that's going to be important, especially if you have to leave your location to get to a bug out location. I examined some different solutions to that problem in the new book in Behold Darkness and Sorrow. Um, cars built before 1980, they don't have computer systems, and so they're going to be much more resilient against an EMP attack. Other solutions you can look at for short distances are bikes, dirt bikes, older tractors, dune buggies, or you can motorize your bicycle. eBay sells kits to motorize your bike for around 150 bucks. Now, keep in mind, these things are made in China, and they're cheap. Uh, I've had a couple of those kits. They work pretty good for a while. Uh, what ha- what tends to happen is they get hot they're, because they're air-cooled. They don't have any other type of cooling system, so you can't run them very far at a time. And uh, they eventually either they warp or the uh, the uh, the seal ring that holds the 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 oil and gas and everything in it that that breaks. Uh, but they're they're pretty good for about six months, and then after that they're pretty much trash. But you get what you pay for. One hundred and fifty bucks. Uh, if you wanted something motorized that would get you around or get you from point A to B for a short period of time after an EMP. Uh, it's a low cost solution and they don't have any computer components and you start them by popping the clutch. So there's no battery and there's no separate ignition component either to go bad or uh, be destroyed by a, uh, by a pulse attack. The most important thing is get a plan. Now the result would be absolutely catastrophic. And like I said, the experts predict that about 9 in 10 Americans would probably die within the first year after an EMP attack. Uh, And if you missed my interview with Dr. Peter Pry, go to PrepperRecon.com, click the Archives tab at the top of the page, and uh, scroll down and you'll see Dr. Peter Pry EMP. Uh, You'll see it's a two-part podcast, so uh, listen to both of those. It's something that you absolutely can't afford to miss. So uh, if you missed it, check it out. And if you like to read, check out my new book, Behold Darkness and Sorrow. It's book one of the Seven Cows Ugly and Gaunt series. And uh, because proper fiction has a way of causing you to consider how you would survive a real EMP. It's going to get those creative prepper juices going and you're going to look at how well prepared you are and how well you would you would be able to survive what the protagonists are having to deal with, what Danny and his friends are having to to get through in order to survive, and uh, and make sure you enter the giveaway contest. Uh, like I said, everybody's going to win. Uh, you might win the you might win the the nice individual first aid kit, or you're at least going to get the seven step survival plan. You're going to get a, a free PDF copy of that. So uh, great value. And until next time, God bless and happy prepping. I've personally been buying gold and silver from JM Bullion for over two years. They offer the best prices over spot that I can find, and I've never had a problem with an order. If you're looking to trade in some of your fiat paper for real money, check out jmbullion.com today. Get prepared before disaster strikes. PrepperRecon.com offers Molly-compatible individual first aid kits for your home, auto, or bug-out bag. These kits have everything you need to address a traumatic injury, including an Israeli battle dressing, quick clot, EMT shears, suture kit, steri strips, tourniquet, tough strip bandages, and so much more. $99 includes shipping. Go to PrepperRecon.com and click the store tab at the top of the home page. Order today before it's too late.